Can I have a 10 bead? I guess. <laughs> how many have you had? Yeah, how many have you had? I haven't had any yet because I didn't want to be chewing while I talked. So I oh just... my god. How are you? How are you? How are you functioning? Yeah, I know. Alright. Just a nice big inhale too when he gets it. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> That's it's the good the, stuff. It's the birthday cake and oatmeal one. There you go. Oh my god. What's up? We are on the porch of Front Porch Music. This is Jenna. And I'm Logan. And we had an awesome chat with Brian John Harwood. We did. We also, fun fact, uh, we also learned that he eats 20 Tim Biebs every morning. Uh, so that's a lot of sugar in a day. Yeah. He didn't seem too phased by it. He did not. But uh, hot tip, the, which one sucks? The cheese, cheesecake. The cheesecake something. Anyways. We didn't just talk about food. We talked about food for a minute though. We talked about the Caesars. He claims to make a really great one. And then Jenna claims to make an even better one. I do. I didn't claim that. You claimed it for me basically. Well, I'll be the judge. Regardless, uh, we talked about Caesars and then we got into what it's like being a, not only a solo artist, but part of a band. Um, you've caught him not only on the road as Brian John Harwood, but Kansas Stone as well. We talked about some of the music he's released, um, how he's really honed in on, you know, staying true to himself, weeding the garden. <laughs> yeah, and living life as an independent artist. Stay tuned for our chat with Brian John Harwood. Hello! Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the virtual porch. Well, thanks for having me. Of course. We got lots to talk to you about. I surfed through your Instagram last night. We got to talk about your uh, Caesar recipes because you claim to make really good ones. I do. Um, and I guess I'll be the judge of that eventually. We have to have like a Caesar, uh, Caesar off. A, a, a Caesar one off. of these, at one of these um, events or times we get together, I'll bring all the fixings and we'll see who makes the better Caesar. All right. We'll do it at my place. Uh, next time you, you're up. Uh, Jenna, and uh, I will be the judge of both of your Caesars. All right, perfect. Yeah, I will be wasted. <laughs> <laughs> I, may, I make mine with beer, though. So, yeah. Okay, I guess we're getting into the Caesars now. Explain yourself. <laughs> I've actually had this, too, but I don't make so, it um, So, like, I don't mind it with vodka. It's great with vodka. But, so I end up, um, like, a light beer, like PBR or Bud Light or or uh, Coors or something. I put the whole can in and about maybe 20% Clamato. So it still tastes, you don't taste the beer in it because I, I use like the, like I put a bit of dill in there. There's some, like I put a lot of stuff in there. So you don't, it still tastes like a Caesar, but it's not as heavy on your stomach and it's refreshing instead. So you can have more than just one. And it's like, you know how I love Caesars, but they're really thick and they're like, after it's one or soup. two, like it's like you ate a whole meal. So like this way, it um, still gives you a nice buzz after a few, but you can have like four, you know, and it, instead of just settling with one. I'm having a hard time picturing, picturing the taste of Clamato and beer. It's really good. Actually, before I drink Caesars, I drank beer and Clamato juice. Like I still yeah. do the rimmer. My whole family I, does. Yeah. Am I the I only do, one who doesn't know this is a thing? I still oh. do the rimmer. I still do like, um, you know, the extreme beans and like the pickles. And, of course. Like, I put some, like, sometimes I'll barbecue up some bacon and put some bacon, like, on a skewer, you know, like, it, uh, and some mozzarella. It's, like, I make them fancy, but, like, trust me, once you try the beer one, you won't go back. They are pretty good. Also, pickled asparagus. Oh, yes. Have you tried that? Yeah. Don't, don't get me started. Asparagus is my favorite for some reason. Mine, oh, too. too. The Matt and Steve's ones pickled are so good. We should try pickling my own asparagus. <laughs> Not sponsored. <laughs> oh. Have you ever had a Caesar with like a grilled cheese or something on top of it? Uh, in Nashville, I think it, it was like uh, Reba McIntyre's like diner or something. Um, it was one of my first times in Nashville, and I went there. Reba and... has a diner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess I I remember it was probably about five six years ago, and I just. The menu was unbelievable, like some with crab legs and everything. I got one. Mike had a tater tot and a burger on it, bacon, and like everything was coming out. Like it stands about seven inches above the glass, and it's all these like, you know, it's yeah, craziness. I don't, I don't get see that the fancy crazy. things. No, 
I don't get re- Reba crazy on it, but there's a place near my house that has lobster tails as the garnish. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, I try it. Didn't mean. You know me it? and sushi. I, I like anything seafood. So we were yeah. we were talking about yeah meeting up with you when we come when I come up to Aurelia next. And he was like, Logan was like, we should get sushi because he loves sushi. And I was like, I'm such a loser with chopsticks. I can't <laughs> go out with people. <laughs> it's like, like you my, can use a fork. It's like my drummer, um, Big Turk. He, every time we go, he's like, um, can I get a fork? And so so I, I keep bugging him every time now. I'm like, you can't use a fork at a sushi place. So now I make him get the, like, they, a lot of places have, like, kid-friendly ones where they have an elastic at the end of it. <laughs> So, the trainer so ones, yeah. Just, yeah, so the training ones. Are... I was telling Jenna about those too. I have a pair of trainers from when I went to uh, South Korea, and uh, they're Thomas the Tank Engine, and they're very fun. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's just like tweezers. Yeah. You might as well be tweezers. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Anyways, sushi's so good. Oh, so good. I haven't been to sushi like since the beginning of COVID. Oh, that's really? I, got, I, I go like once a week, yeah, which is good for me because I used to go like three, maybe four times a week. I had a problem at one point. So <laughs> I'm seeing a pattern. You're currently addicted to Tim Beeves and raspberry iced tea. Yes. Tim Beeves. I got to <laughs> cut out the 20 Tim Beeves every morning. Um, you know, it's a, it's, it's a good thing when they stop because I don't, I'm not a normal, uh, like, um, like a Tim Beeves fan. Like the Timbits, I, I'm not. I don't like the donuts and stuff like that. But um, it's good that uh, they end the whole thing because when it stopped last time, I'm like, oh, okay, thank God. And I went without them, and then all of a sudden they brought them back, and I'm like, every morning twenty Tim beads. So <laughs> it's gonna be hard to get in shape like this. <laughs> You're not helping, anyways. <laughs> okay, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't come here just to talk about food, food although yeah. we could talk about it all day. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's just how it started. I, I, um, I like food, man. I did. I didn't know if you guys know this, but I, I was a chef for um, almost five years, four four and a half years, and what? I, I did I, not know this. Yeah, I cooked um, cooked for all the Jays, all the Leafs, like Carlton Banks from Fresh Breads, Hulk Hogan cooked him his meal, brought it right to his table. He like bear hugged me and called me brother. And that's why I use. That's why I call everybody brother now, is because <laughs> Hulk Hogan passed it down to me. Yeah, he hugged you, and the and the brother came <laughs> yeah. right off. Yeah, yeah. But... What the heck? That is fascinating. You make some extravagant things, though. You post on your stories sometimes, and you have like a. First of all, everything is barbecued, which is cool. I'm oh, yeah. scared of barbecues. Very scared. Brian John Harwood is opulent in the kitchen. Opulent. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I just like to I like to cook and experiment, and it's an art form too, right? Just like how I paint and I draw and. I, uh, you know, I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like my good boy cover, I, I, I did that by hand and actually I got another version of rich coming out next week. Uh, it's a solo version with PBR like sponsoring it, giving away. And I, I just drew, I drew the front cover just in, in 10 minutes. I just drew a can like, so like, I I love to draw and paint and, um, Yeah, I do all that stuff, so. I'm looking at the Good Boy cover. Yeah, I'm looking at the Good Boy cover, too. That's wicked. That song made me cry a hundred times. Yeah, Jenna uh, cries every time she hears that song. I just, sometimes I do the the photography, and I do all the graphic design, and pretty much anything artsy or creative. I just, I like to dive into. I've always been creative. You know, growing up, um, my brother Joe, he's two years older than me. He's always a sports guy, and, like, I tried the sports, but, like, I quit hockey three days after. (laughs) <laughs> and then, like, you know, I'd go to all his games, but I'd chug my hot chocolate really fast just so I could draw on the side of the styrofoam cup. You know what I mean? Like, what? I, was, I was super, um, you know, right from a kid, super artistic and super, like, just down with anything with my hands, you know? So when did music come into that? Like, when did you find music as, as a creative outlet? Actually, it was it was my brother, really. My brother was in a band, I think, when he was grade nine. So I would have been, like, grade six or something, grade seven. And he was a drummer. He started off as a drummer and stuff. And he had guitars laying around the house. And just one day, I, uh, I think I was 11 years old, I scooped up one of the guitars out of his room. And I brought it up to my room. And back in the day, there was no internet like we have it now anyway. But... Uh, so we, I was gonna be like, you're not that old. It wasn't this. No. It wasn't the '80s or the <laughs> but '70s. They, but, but how you used to learn songs is like magazines, right? So you'd mm-hmm. go grab the Guitar World magazine, and 
And, you know, I remember sitting in my room learning, um, you know, Def Leppard and, you know, all these songs just taught myself no lessons still have never had uh, guitar lessons or vocal lessons or anything but i just i just kind of i was such a shy kid right i couldn't talk i didn't you know i literally I can't believe that <laughs> yeah i i like literally from 11 years old when i started playing i never sang or played in front of even my parents till i was 22 i never kissed a girl till i was 22 i never did uh, you know i i was 22 so, was a formative year well, <laughs> It's 22. I uh, I was 22 years old, and I got my hand caught in a steel mill and almost ripped my hand off. So ah, uh, it was bandaged up and stitched up for a while. And the doctor's like, "You like it?" Literally ripped my whole hand apart. I could see the bones in my hand and stuff. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry to get graphic, but but it was a life changing spot in my hand, and that's my whole one arm is tattooed about overcoming my shyness, and that's what did when the, when the doctor said like. He almost went with it, like lost your hand. When it healed, I asked the girl that I had a crush on forever. I asked her out. I started my own band. I started playing in front of. So it was like, it was like an eye opener that I needed. Thank gosh I didn't lose my hand. But um, yeah, things happen for a reason, right? So ever, wow. yeah, ever since then, I've just been, you know, kind of still a little shy and quiet sometimes. But I, I just try to force myself into, you know. Even if I'm scared or, or have a fear or something, just do it scared, you know? Just do it scared. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Why does that hit? Yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> well, you just got to wow. do it, you know? And, and uh, that's what I like in a, my wife now. That's what I, I tell her. If, if she has a fear of something, I'm like, then let's do it. Because as soon as you throw yourself out there and you do it, do it once or, or you know, um, you start building up where you're like, oh, that wasn't that bad, you know? I went off topic there. I forget what we were talking about before. But one thing led to another somehow. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. So you, you, you started doing, you know, got through the shyness and started doing that, mu- like doing your music. Um, when did you realize that music was kind of your future and... Uh, Career. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really... Like, it was such a, you know, such a weird path. I just... Um, so I was 22. I started my... Like, I, I played in uh, a few bands before that in my teens and stuff. But, like, I was, like, the lead singer, but I couldn't sing in front of anybody else because I was too shy. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, yeah. I was just, like, everybody... I remember there's a group of four of us. We, we wanted to start a band. We were in, like, grade 9 or grade 10. And it's like, okay, who's singing? And everybody raised their hand, not me, not me, not... And I was, like, the last one. And I was just like, I don't know how to sing, you know? And I'm, you know, we just play music play music you know i know we had a few live shows but i couldn't do them because i couldn't sing and then just you know once i turned 22 and that that all happened to me i just put the fear of the window started playing live shows um in more of a rock band i guess southern southern rock um you may call it i don't know i, I did that for many years and and toured with like uh three days grace big rack uh finger 11 uh stuff like that right and then um and then i just how it all happened actually the the transformation was i took my mom out on a date to a dean brody show so Hmm. dean brody was playing barry and so i know i grew up on country because my parents i grew up loving alabama alan jackson my mom has like this crazy infatuation with alan jackson like i mean there was a cardboard cut up cut out (laughs) in my house my whole youth growing up you know so that's amazing that's hilarious but i loved country as well yeah garth brooks was one of my biggest heroes everything but i did go into the rock world and stuff but when i found out dean brody was coming uh to barry i asked my mom i went on a date and i took her and then seeing the um the country community and the crowd and it changed everything for me everything where i left that show and in my rock band at the time was Matt Davey. And I, I called him that night and I said, listen, I'm starting a side project. Um, I'm going to call it Kansas Stone. And um, literally that night I wrote, I think, my first two songs, which was like All I Want, we released and stuff. And I just wrote them so fast and showed him. And we that's how Kansas Stone was born. And, you know, and... Um, that seems right. so, so easy. Did you have Kansas Stone kind of 
ready to like in your head already before the Dean Brody concert, or was it li- literally that oh, night? You're like, this is happening. Dean Brody, Dean Brody, and uh, started Kansas Stone. Like I, uh, like that night. No that's all, that's wild. I had no idea that I, I kind of wanted to switch that way. Then I seen Dean Brody. Um, he did a Bob Marley cover, and I, I was like blown away. I was just like. It's funny, from a guy that grew up loving Bon Jovi, Aerosmith, like the early 90s stuff, it's almost like country, is that, that's what country is now. So it's like, um, it just opened my eyes to be like, you know, I don't have to write these, you know, I can actually get in depth and be more storyteller, like the country I grew up on, the country that I loved. So as soon as we uh, started Kansas Stone, Everything kind of snowballed. Our first show was with uh, Tebe, I think Brett Kissel, Dallas Smith. Um, it's it big first show. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's how it started. So you had so you have Kansas Stone, and you, you you guys are definitely still a thing. But when did you decide to do a solo project? Actually, it was Matt Matt's idea, Matt Davy, because um, he had a side project. He has a like a side rock thing still, and and, and I was leaning more. Uh, pushing some of my pop roots and you can really hear it in Kansas Stone like Blaze of Nothing and stuff like that uh, where we started going from Southern Rock and stuff to over to a bit more like your summertime like my influences were coming out stronger now than both of us what we so um, I think it was uh, yeah Matt just like you should release Take Back the song that you wrote that we thought was too poppy for Kansas Stone he said uh you know, release it as a solo. So I did that, I think, right before uh, COVID. And then when COVID hit, you know, I just, um, I couldn't hang around. Back. Like, we had we were in our house by ourselves. So I just started, like, writing and, and doing my own thing. And it just snowballed into this, into this beast that allows me to share little pieces of my life and get more personal and in depth with uh with my music and my fan base right like how do you decide i mean I, you kind of just said it but how do you decide what if a song is kansas stone or if it's brian john harwood or if it's matt davy well i write probably 90 90 percent 95 percent of everything so like as i write it i'll know if it's personal there's been a, a few really personal ones I've used for Kansas Stone. Like before I even proposed to my wife, I had released a song with Kansas Stone, Edge of Forever. And it's about how, how much I wanted to marry her and, and stuff. So that is a very personal song to me, but it, it was Kansas. But that was at the time right before COVID, like literally a month before COVID, we put that out. And then it kind of just hit me while, while we were on lockdown that I had all these such personal songs that dad and and stuff like that that was just it would make more sense if i released them myself you know mm. um you know when we sit down for kansas now and write uh, especially moving forward because i got the solo project trying to push matt to be more of the the front man more more of his vocals because i'm a big fan of his vocals i love his vocals i think the newer kansas stone stuff is going to be you know more edgy more um americana mixed with rock you know it's just when we make music, we just we don't really try to stick in a genre. Even with my solo stuff, if you look at my solo stuff, it goes from from you know pop country to old traditional country to rock country to you know and stuff in the future. I'm working with uh, some big U.S. and Sweden heavy metal bands for for a country song and and stuff like like. There's, I just did one with a bigger Canadian artist uh, that I like, and we use the guys from Nickelback and Motley Crue. Like I, I just. I like to have fun with each song and make each song different, right? Which can be scary sometimes. Like my next release for August, I've sat on this song for three years just because I don't know if people are ready for it. I'm so nervous to re- release it and hear people's opinion because it's just something different that hasn't been done. And it's it's very nerve wracking, which, you know, you should just go with your heart. But like people, so many people, like big big people in the industry and other artists love the song and, and like you gotta release this you gotta release this but like part of me is just like ah uh, i'm nervous about what people will say or, or label it you know it's because i'm gonna throw stuff. something back in your face of what you just said about five minutes ago just do yeah. it scared uh, there you go and that's, <laughs> that's, what I'm do- that's what i'm doing i already i'm already designing the uh the front like it's all it's going out whether i like it or not so i'm just because it's 
I waited so long that, you know, it was a very original um, song title, but now I waited so long that um, the Hunter Brothers just released something that sounds just like, like the name, almost like, <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm just like, ah, oh, if I Damn it. released it like, you know, if I released, if it released it a few months earlier, then, then it would have been fine, but. You know, I'm still oh, wow. gonna release it. It's it's still something really different for me. And add to my catalog. I feel I feel this year has been a very energetic year for me with starting off with saving off saving up for a Friday with Jason McCoy, going into That's a Rich fun with one. Ali and Chris and then, you know, have this one um just add to an exciting year which is like just upbeat. You know, I think I made it gave enough people tears last year and the year before with songs like First and Dad and Good Boy, so We'll save some of those for January with the next album. So. It's me. I'm people. Yeah, it's Jenna cries at all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very excited to hear this next one. Yeah. Let's take a quick break and we'll get right back to it with Brian John Harwood. All right. We are back on the porch with Brian John Harwood. Yes. I have a very direct, specific question for you because I spent a lot of time chatting with some pretty new artists who are trying to figure out how the hell to be an independent artist and self-establish. And you've done a really, really good job of that. And some of them have actually mentioned you. So I want to know like your take on what's really important in establishing yourself independently and being able to, you know, survive, make money, live off of like as an independent artist. That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> it's hard because the industry is forever changing. Like, I mean, month by month. Still, these big, big records, exact, they don't know what's happening. And they're kind of grasping as it goes. So, in my experiences, the best thing you can do is experience. Get out there, play shows, make mistakes, get told no a hundred times for that one yes. Um, you know, if you're tired... You know, still put on those clothes, go out, shake some hands. It's the music industry is just like every other industry in life. It's who you know and and just be a good person. In this industry, you got to leave your egos at the door. There's no egos. There's no negativity. You got to just be positive. We're all chasing the same thing, but like do it your own own way. Do it your own style. And that's what my biggest thing is. And it took me forever. I was signed with Kansas Stone with wax under universal they just you know i we had to lead part ways they just wanted us to be another james barker band and um there's already a james barker band right um you just kind of you know don't try to duplicate what's already out there you know just like i was talking to you about how i'm so nervous about this next song because it's different than everybody else and you know look at saving up for friday that was different than anything that was released in canada like the fact that Jason McCoy jumped onto that, he's you would never guess he would do something like that. You just kind of stay, you know, stay original, stay you, you know, and, um, you know, just uh, just be positive. And my biggest thing to, to the people growing up, don't in this market right now, it took me a while to learn ins and out how you make the money and how, how you survive. Of it. But I still own my own business and I still go to work Monday to Friday of my own business and I do custom marble showers and, and stuff and I love it and then uh, you know anything I do off music can go back into my music because my lifestyle my family and my Mustangs and, and all that stuff is getting paid by uh, my hard work during the week you know so don't think it's just you know I'm gonna be a rock star blah 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 you know it's it's a lot harder than that because everybody's brother and sisters in the industry and there's thousands and thousands of people just in ontario just in ontario going for the same spot so just have a backup plan you could still chase music 100 percent. and look at everything i do i have no team i have anything i do all my graphics i do all my i'm the manager i'm the you know i book all the shows i'm the agent i'm the everything i do i'm 100 percent uh indie you know i still make time for that and work and have a family and, and you know what i mean so there is time you just got to i don't watch tv really you know what i mean so the hours that you waste watching tv you know um write songs or do artwork or, or do you know so 
I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't don't get me wrong. You know, sometimes before when I go I'm just to kidding. bed for like a half hour or something, you know, I'll throw on Netflix or, uh, you know, me and my wife got like like addicted to those um, cheesy like the circle or or you know those oh, <laughs> you know those shows. Do I know those? <laughs> so it's like I hurry up and do my work so I could get into bed and watch one show a night or something. You know what I mean? So. You just for the people growing, uh, coming up, and just starting, man. Like, chase it with all your energy you got, but make sure you have something to fund your way because it is an expensive journey. You know, you you want your stuff. I try to make sure all my stuff looks like it's coming from a label, and I have a lot of people that write me from labels and, and think that I'm already on a label, but I do everything myself. It's just you want to make your product the best you can make it before you put it out. You know. Well, you definitely have a mar- like a like a brand like a clear brand and a, and a mind for it because everything you do kind of has a similar vibe and similar look and, and like the same quality. And for me, as like a, as a marketer, I really appreciate it whenever I see your stuff come out comes out because it looks polished, it looks great. Um, that means a lot, and that's, that means a lot because that's, I've had people, I've had people, other artists write me and be like, I, "Can you help me just uh, create a brand?" I'm like, I don't know who you are. You don't get it. Like, my stuff, it's not really a brand. It's just who I am. That's why it's so easy, you know? I love my dog. I love my family. My favorite colors are teal and yellow. I'm a beach guy. I love the summertime. Like, that's just that's just who I am, you know what I mean? And, you know, and, and I think that's the age and the era we're at with, like, TikTok and, like, like all this stuff is people feel that they need to create something that, is not them so they can get ahead which is like so ass backwards that um they just need to be themselves i think and and if you're true to yourself and it took me a long time to figure that out but you know especially with the solo project if i just be myself a lot of fans dig it like it more people are really vibing on it because they can relate because i'm not faking or or i'm just being me that's a big lesson that is a big lesson, and it's kind of one that we kind of preach to a lot. I'm when you're talking about that, I'm thinking about the first time I saw you on stage. Well, I saw you play twice in October last year, and you, you always look like you're having so much fun on stage, which is one why I'm, I can't believe you're shy because when you get up there, you're just like totally owning it. But I'm like, you're literally not like trying to do something or trying to fool anybody. You have your cute blue guitar, you're jamming, <laughs> you're having a good time, and that's I think why. There's nothing like people aren't like, what the hell is he doing? It's just like you're doing, you are having fun, and then everybody watching you is having fun. It's like the perfect cycle because you're not trying to do anything that's not you. That, that means so much because um, I love live. I love it. And, and sometimes people are like, um, okay, because I play, literally, I can't even think of another artist that I play with that doesn't use backing tracks, auto tune, live auto tune, or like all those, all those things in ears or whatever. I'm just the guy that, you know, plug me in. I want the speakers at the front. You know, we really p- practice, you know, as a band. We just, I like that raw. I think growing up, I, I really got into guys like Zach Wilde um, and and just more raw sound. Like, um, it's hard to pinpoint somebody today doing, I guess Chris Stapleton's the closest thing that really does it. It's just that that raw real live sound you know through the mo- yeah. through the monitors you don't have backing tracks and fake computer sounds and fake harmonies and stuff to make it you know and don't get me wrong i'm not knocking that it sounds really full and maybe one day i might try that but you know it's just it's always been a thing of me just you know four or five guys or girls or whatever and you plug in and you, you just the music you make with those instruments is the music you make on stage, you know, no assist, mm. you just kind of, and that raw, real sound is, I think what, you know, my fans, I think they like, I think if it was too polished and too sounding like the record, they, they could just go home and listen to the record, you know? That's true. That's not mm-hmm. what people come to see a live show for. I also kind of think because you have a rock background, that's why you can. Yeah, I guess kind of bring that into your country performance yeah, right? all the, because all that's the not years, something that's heavy in rock music either yeah. or was it all the years watching uh you know i was a big fan of uh guns and roses metallica you know motley Crue, like the showman the showman rock or the showman metal you know yeah. that is just like um 
like I think Molly Crew said it best. Like I've seen Molly Crew nine times, and I'm going back in August to see them for the tenth time. Um, and they're not the best band live. Vince Neil can't even sing. But the thing is, they're entertainers. So when you're watching that stage, mm. I'm entertained. I go because it lets me forget about my everyday. It, you know, and that's what live music should be. And that's what I try to to do with my shows is just have so much fun on there and try to engage the crowd so much that, you know, something bad happened that day or, or that week or whatever. It's not, they're just sunken in the moment and having fun. And that's, you know, uh, you know, uh, hopefully as, as I go on with my career, I, I can step that up and, and chase that a little bit more, but that's, that's what I try to do. So. In the same vein, kind of, of, of being a, an independent artist and the, the advice that you gave, you also have some pretty frequent collaborators that you work with pretty frequently and you surround yourself around people who are like, like consistent, like Dustin Bird, Matt Davey, obviously Ali Walker. Like how important is it to find your, your crew as an independent artist? Well, as an artist, man, I've been very fortunate. Um, you know, I am, um, I don't have any bad will or bad thoughts about anybody in the industry. You know, some people might have more egos and that's fine. Sometimes it happens and, and they'll learn as they go. Um, and some people are just, you know, more quiet. Um, you know, it, it, like you mesh with some people better. I just kind of took a while, but I found my people, you know, and I found, uh, Dustin Bird for one, you, you mentioned him first. So I'll start with him is, um, I met him when he was 22 years old and he is without a doubt the most talented kid I have ever met in my life. Uh, musically, mm. um, you know, he, he has a different sound that I don't think people are ready for yet, but like he's, he's just so talented vocalist writer. He should be winning the awards for producer of the year. Uh, I mean, like what he does, not just on my stuff, but his stuff and other artists. And look what he did with Together, Together We're Strong. Like he took 20 artists and, and during a pandemic. And the kid is just amazing, you know. And, and I learned something long ago that when I was getting rid of all the negative people in my life, the best thing I've ever done, by the way, is just kind of weed the garden. And... <laughs> You know what I mean? You, we eat well, the garden. You know what? And somebody told me that. That's so somebody funny. told me that uh, one time, and it's. I'm telling you, my life went from zero to a hundred within within a year. You know what I mean? Just concentrating on the positive. And if you see a lot of my posts on Instagram, and that's what I'm. I'm. I'm all about it. I'm not some like hippie guy. I'm just like it works. It really works. So I'm just like, you know, stay positive, positive vibes, you know, um, manifest, you know, it, it, it really does work. Yeah. You'll, you'll see it once you do that. I just, I try to, um, I try to do that. And with, like I said, with Dustin and, and Dwayne and these guys, I, you surround yourself with people that are better than you, you know, that are, that drive you, that push you to be the next, the, the better version of yourself. I mean, if you look at my voice from some early Kansas Stone stuff to now after working with Dustin for a few years, like it doesn't even sound like the same person. You know, like when I go in studio with Dustin, the knowledge out of that, that, that guy, he, it's just he's totally taught, t taught me to find my own voice and figure out my own voice instead of, you know, um, going on my little comfort, my my nervous shyness, you know, hiding behind that like. Pearl Jam, Chris Stapp, you know what I mean? Like, like, and it was like a comfort thing because I was shy, right? And then, um, you know, it's uh, it night and days it. And then, yeah, I suggest that for, like you were saying, for any upcoming artists, find your crew, find people that light up when you walk in a room or, or that bring out the best of you. Allie Walker, she's so talented. And Dustin and I both, you know, spent a couple weekends, you know, like almost like a retreat she had us at her house and we you know cooked and stuff we wrote like 11 songs and we have a bunch of songs on her album and you know she's so talented and you know um my other producer i have about three or four producers right now just because i'm 
I'm trying to trying to really stock up on my music. You know what I mean? Have you know 20, 25 songs ahead. So like, if anything ever happened to me, there'd be a whole bunch of songs <laughs> my wife can release, right? But um, <laughs> but Dwayne's another one. Like Dave Tom, I don't know if you guys know him and the band Dway, uh, band Wave. Like going to California, he's he's so good. He's so good, um, and it's so positive, and just lifts up young artists and and helps them out. The only, that I, yeah, I think it's really important to find to find your crew. It, it is, man. Like like music or otherwise, it's just in, in life. Surround yeah. yourself with positive people. You know what I mean, and that that's why I've mm-hmm. loved you guys since I met you guys. Like you, you're you're those people. You, you always. You, you surround yourself with people that smile when you're around or that, you know, bring you up. Life's too short to that's So to everybody listening, weed those gardens. Get your garden gloves on and, and weed away, you know. Glad you made the cut. <laughs> Seriously, thanks, man. Really, really, really appreciate being here. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready to wrap things up, but I have a game first. Yeah, we have a game. Um. It's the casual. It's well, the Jenna usual. Has a game. Yeah, it's the this or that <laughs> game. Um, I've played it with a couple yeah. of people, and we usually get some funny responses. So um, you have to make a choice. There's no both. It's always I'm good at one this. or the other. Okay. Do I get? Do I get to? All right, Metallica. Why? Oh. Uh, yes. Why you're good at it? Okay. Oh no. What? Wait. Oh, why you did? Why you made your decision? I'm good at like just. Um, I play that with a lot of people. I'm like, would you rather? Would you rather? You know? Would you rather do this or this? You, okay. You know? You learn a lot about people. Yeah. You do. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, we're going to play your game, and then we might get you to help with our other game that we have for somebody else. <laughs> After this. Yeah, okay, you ready? Nice. First one, Metallica or Queen? So you have respect for both, but for myself, I'm going to Metallica. Uh, only, only because okay. uh, it kind of, James Hatfield kind of formed who I was um, as a writer, as a musician growing up uh, so much respect for Freddie and Queen and stuff I just didn't listen to them as much um, growing up I think it's switched now but uh, I'm still gonna ride with Metallica ride the lightning <laughs> I only put that in there because you posted a picture of uh, both rec- like a, re- a Metallica record and a Queen no, record no they're like, actually they're oh, actually, they're actually um, <laughs> kids books they're, what? Uh, what? if you look at my post on my Instagram again. They're actually um, a Metallica kid story that tells uh, they're, they're a whole book line of like famous bands, what? but they tell them in in like so I read them to my kids. Um, God, yeah. I want these books. Man. What the heck? I just looked at the photo and was like, No, records. man, they like they're so cool because they tell. I, Dad finds. Yeah, so I, I know um, I know the real story of both what? and. And it stays stays true to the story, but it says it in a like a nice child way with with like painted pictures and and stuff of the band. They're so I cute. I know, right? So. Oh my gosh! I didn't even click it. I was just like looking at your looking yeah. at the like grid. She was cre- yeah. creeping your feed. I was creeping your feed so hard last night. How could I not? Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? Look. <laughs> my baby, it's like now my Instagram has turned into like I just you know those those babies have changed my whole life and. You know, um, like I think it's having the girls just made me um, such a better. I, I'm Girl just dad. a big suck now. Yeah, I'm such a big suck. <laughs> like, I'll we'll be laying in bed watching that TV is not a problem. or something, and like this sad thing will happen, and like my wife looks over at me, and there's like tears running down my eyes, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm just a big softy now, thanks to my girls. Aww. <laughs> Good. Okay, we were playing a game and we All are right. got off track. This is how it happens. But anyways, next to this or that, a new guitar or a new tattoo? I'm going to go with, um, since we're talking about it currently right now, I'm going to say new guitar because I think I'm done with tattoos. Uh, as well, I, uh, oh. Said no one ever just, who has tattoos. Well, I just finished um, my other arm. So my one arm is all about the whole story. I got a song about it. Uh, come, like I said about when I almost lost my hand it's overcoming my shyness and becoming me the other arm I just finished it has everything that positive in my life that I love it has you know the five X's is the date I married my wife 
um, the lion would it would me it's me and then my wife is a red rose i got the two white roses for my twins has a gibson guitar has so it has like everything i love and to be honest with you the last tattoo i got of that gibson guitar like normally tattoos don't bother me i don't know if it's getting older i don't know but it was the most excruciating four hours of really? my life where i'm just like okay arms oh. done and i said i am done with tattoos <laughs> Must be because yeah, you're a big could softie be. now. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, next one. You love your cars, your Mustangs, automatic or standard. Uh, I, a lot of car guys and stuff are gonna bust my bust my butt for this one, but I'm 100 automatic guy. But not because I can't um, do it. I grew up doing it, and I have a motorcycle, which is obviously standard. But they sell motorcycles in automatic, and I'm like eyeball and nose and i'm just like 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 why you know like i i could <laughs> I, I could be driving agreed I, I drive my mustang and you know like i could have a, a sandwich in my hand like the the most the most annoying <laughs> you can have your tim beebs in your hand thing, like is like driving in a city if i have to go down to toronto for work or for like something with the band and stuff and imagine standard like shift, stop, shift, shift, shift. Like man, it would be no fun at yeah, all. No. Automatic. So you don't have some. You don't have something exactly. to prove. Exactly, I don't. What you're saying automatic. It. It's easy. There's no need for all of these steps. Constant. That's why like, no, I'm. I'm just. No. My brother's drive I'm standard. Like, I, I don't think get... I'm a guy that's um, so comfortable with what I, what I like and stuff. It's like, I don't really care other people's opinion on on me for like. I'm proud to say automatic. Some guys are like, no, it needs to be standard. Just like some people's like, oh, no, I need to only drink whiskey and beer because I'm a real man. But I'm like, give me pina coladas. Give me the fruity <laughs> stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm comfortable <laughs> with that. <laughs> okay. Fair. Next question. Fried or grilled? Fried. Fried. Only because... Really? I thought you were going to say grilled because you're a barbecue I know. Guy. It's just... Well, dip t- depends on what we're talking. I would take I'm talking deep fried and grilled because, like, like if I go out for breakfast and I get my eggs, Benny, you know, and I always ask them, I'm like, mm-hmm. are your home fries deep fried or grilled? And if they say grilled, I say, like, can you please deep fry them? You know, so that there's nothing better yeah, than, like than a crunch, crunch, you know. So it's not healthy for you, but either is <laughs> twenty tin beads every morning. So. <laughs> Yeah. And just sit in the sauna. <laughs> okay. Um, vodka or whiskey? Vodka or whiskey? Oh, mm-hmm. totally. You know, back in my youth growing up, I, I would use whiskey, but um, I've had, I had way too many... Um, can't remember what happens. So I literally, if I'm doing whiskey, it might be one shot with the guys, but if I'm um, drinking, it's 100% vodka. 100 percent okay um do you prefer a beach day or a cottage day 100 percent. although i was just in lake rosso yesterday and i loved it but you throw me on a sand beach especially if there's a palm tree i have some weird love for palm trees i don't know what i was in my last life but um i white sand and palm trees i you know pina colada beach palm tree you're kenny chesney in your past life (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, a winter vacay or a summer vacay? I feel like we just answered that through the other Well, what do you mean, though? That, like, but... leave here in the summer or leave here in the winter? Or do you mean go to, like... Go somewhere hot oh, or go somewhere cold? I would never go somewhere cold. Here, here's the thing. <laughs> you were born in the I, middle of the summer. I know. Probably the dead I, of the like, heat, Like, I'm fair-skinned right? and, like, blonde and little ginger. You know, you think I would uh, hide from the sun... And you don't. Yeah, and, and I love it when it's like forty-five. Like when it's hot like that, I oh, I love. Kill me. It. Yes. Just put a beer oh, in my yeah. hand by a pool. I'm good. Um, but if, the thing is, I tell my wife, and I'm, I've been trying to talk my wife into it forever. Is move to a hot, hot place, and then if I lived in a hot place, I would love for December just to go away for one month into the snow, and then you get to leave and never see snow again for a year. It'd be great. 
Mm-hmm. Fair. Or you get somewhere hot and want to go somewhere hot. Yeah, hotter. fair enough. Fair enough. Mm. Okay, last one. Remember, I said okay. you can't pick both ever. It's one oh, or the other. Oh, God. Are you going <laughs> to... This is me. Are you going to pick like, <laughs> This is... Are you gonna ask this me, Logan or Callie? <laughs> no, I no. would never. We're not heartless. I would never. Um, Allie Walker or Dustin Ooh. Bird? <laughs> well, Jenna is very mean. She thrives when people are uncomfortable. I, I, it doesn't make me uncomfortable at all. And like, both our our, our friendships are, are are two different friendships. Um, me and Allie are. Her, like instinct in like how hard we work and our passion she she's one of the most uh hardworking and passionate people about music like reminds me exactly of myself and that's why we get along so well and she's so great um i think me and dustin are a little closer because i've known dustin a few years longer and we do hang out more because we write more he is my producer um and yeah yeah, so I'm, you ha- I, still have to pick. I'm all, just you don't you're have just, to pick. You're justifying your I'm choice, sorry, but you have to pick. I'm sorry, Jenna, Allie, stop I being mean. You, but um, Dustin makes me sound good, so if I didn't pick him, he would make me sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> On the porch, starting fires. I, I love since 2018. Love you, you know, I, I love... I'm just being an ass. That's so funny. Oh, yeah. You still answered. I, well, I really put your pressure Like there. I said, I, you know... It, but if they were both falling off okay. a building, I put both my hands down and I'd risk my own life for both of them, because I love I love them both. So. Cute. That's very cute. Okay, okay. Well, I just thought of one more. Logan Miller or Jenna Weiser? <laughs> <laughs> I just. I hate this. I'm just kidding. I hate this so much. I'm just kidding. Well, that's about all the time we have today. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, this has been fun. Yeah. As much as I'm go, annoying. Go make sure you guys get some uh, get some Tim Beeps. You know? It's like <laughs> No. I should be working for Tim Hortons, you know? Yeah. Don't say anything else without a sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> well, Brian, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, uh, where can people find you? www.brianjohnharwood.com Pretty much has all the links to take you to my you know, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Apple Music, Spotify. Just type in uh, Brian John Harwood and uh, I'll pop up somewhere. Yeah. Poof, you'll come up. Perfect. And, and everyone, be sure to uh, keep an eye out on frontporchmusic.ca. Uh, we'll definitely be sharing out Brian's new song yes. coming out in August. The one that, do you know, scared. just do it. Hey, just do it scared, a, buddy. That should be a song. Let's try a song. <laughs> do it scared. <laughs> sure I don't know if you'll like it but sure <laughs> thank you guys so much for having me thanks so much for joining us on On the Porch with From Porch Music I love talking to artists and digging deep into the world of Canadian country music and I'm so excited you joined if you liked this episode please rate, review and subscribe to this podcast that's the easiest way for you to support this show you may even get a shout out so we'll see you in a couple weeks next time on the porch On the Porch with From Porch Music is hosted by me Logan Miller and Jenna Weiser The theme song was written, produced, and performed by Owen Wrigley.